All right, so what I want to do is I want to uh, just, I saw this many years ago. Um, I just want to illustrate what happens with the soul time. All right, so Mary, Ann, and Eddie, would you please come up? <laughs> So we're going to pretend that Marianne and Eddie are getting engaged. You're not married. You want it over here? Are you able to? Okay. Oh, you want it up here? So we're going to pretend that they're engaged, all right? So what happens is usually when a couple gets engaged, we want to have some kind of marital counseling. And, you know, I'm going to talk to my husband would talk to Eddie, and I would talk to Marianne and just see if you had any you know, we want to repent of any kind of sin, and usually we get to a point where we discuss fornication. And so then what happens is, Eddie then tells me, now, of course, you're not in the conversation, Marianne. Well, he would tell you what? Well, come over here. I <laughs> submit. <laughs> All right. Eddie would tell you. That he had had uh, sex with women prior to, to marriage, and let's just say it was two women. So, can we have two women come up here, please? Just, just come up here. You're only being seen by thousands of people. That's right. right. <laughs> All right. So, okay, come up here. Now, Eddie, put your arm out. And could you guys hold hands? Right? And, and you all hold hands. Yeah. And then we ask, and then we find out that these two girls had relations with other people. So can I get four men, four people to come up, four men or women? <laughs> come on, Nate, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You all come up here. All right, all right. Yeah, so now we're getting the picture here of what's all involved here. And let me just say this. A lot of times when we've ministered to couples, when they said, I do, all hell is broken loose. And a lot of times it is a result of bitter root judgments and expectancies that's been in their life and soul ties that we need to deal with because we're bringing a lot of this into the relationship. Now, I found that from Marianne. Now, I've ministered her privately, and she told me about some extra, you know, some relationship outside of marriage, so I need some, two women to come up here, or two men, but you're going to pretend you're, you're women, you're men. <laughs> men. <laughs> so you get the picture here of now Marianne and Eddie are, want to get joined together, and we have all these that are coming to the marriage and unless they're dealt with, we have all these involved in their marriage bed. Who gives these people to be married to this woman? <laughs> ah. yeah. Yeah. And, and so, and that's what has created. How many times have we heard people say, we were great until we got married? Right? Because of the spiritual implications here and the dynamic. And see, the enemy knows this. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians that we're not to be ignorant of his devices. And this is what happens. But praise the Lord, we can pray and we repent yeah. and we get a cleansing and we sever these ties. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. So what, what happens is repentance is necessary. You confess it. And then so typically, you know, what we would pray is we cut and sever the ungodly soul tie, we name them by names of the different people you were involved with. You cut and sever these ungodly soul ties. Be and because typically what we'll pray is we call back the fragments of our soul to make us whole again and we release it back to them. And then, and then if we're in a ministry session, then we take authority if there's over any spirits that could still that could be there. Not always a spirit there, but if it's there, we take authority or we command it to go. And so that brings tremendous freedom. And it's something that's so important that we understand that, that Jesus Christ died on the, on the cross and he wants us to live a happy, abundant life. But when we have all this that we're starting out with, it, you know, it's, it makes for very difficult in our relationship. So anyway, so um, that's our lesson for tonight. I mean, there's so much we can really... Ooh, 
we can uh, share about, but we just wanted to give you an overview. But we have to understand the word of God is true. It's not there to uh, cause, uh, oh, like we can't deny us and we can't have fun. That's baloney. How many suicides have happened as a result of relationships that didn't work out? How many suicides that were, or, or people that were devastated and, um, or, or just went with multiple partners afterwards or from rape, just the sexual immorality, the sexual sins. And, and you hear of these stories, but then you hear of these marvelous stories of deliverance and freedom that even though it was devastating, but God turned their lives around. See, God never, ever, he sees the end from the beginning. He never wants us to think we're stuck and there's, there's no hope and there's no life and there's nothing going for me. That's a lie. God is saying, listen, I came to set you free, and I came to give you an abundant life, and that you live that abundant life freely and victoriously. We war from that place of victory. He doesn't want us to have a victim mindset or that we'll never, or that we have to be in the sex trade. There are many born-again Christians that are ministering to those in the sex trade. And I, I just saw this book I read a long time ago. I, I, I don't remember what it's called, but it's called... There, it's a ministry angels of something, but they all go into all the strip clubs because this one girl was, she didn't start out to be a stripper, but the money's really good in the industry and wind up getting involved in the ministry. And then, of course, there's so much abuse that takes place. And now she got set free because people went in to minister to her, didn't mistreat her, didn't look down on her, didn't call her whore, didn't call her names, ministered to her. And now she has a phenomenal ministry. She, her particular ministry is in Las Vegas and ministers to all the people that are involved in the sex trade. So, you know, again, Jesus wants us to be the light and we have the answer. So I just want to encourage you that if you've never prayed through, and I have it on your handout, uh, and broken off or, you know, re renounced um, soul ties, it's on the, um, I don't know, I think it's on your last page. You need to pray through that or make an appointment and we can pray with you if there's been, you know, you just need to have some help, all right? And then uh, you can take authority over it, but I do recommend that you meet with somebody. And, um, Han, you want to say something? Yeah. We had a, a speaker several years ago, um, Bill Suttis' wife, and she did a teaching on restoring our innocence. And I just want to really encourage anybody that we don't, you know, we don't live in condemnation. Romans eight one, right? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, and and the the blood of Jesus cleanses us of that iniquity, right? If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of iniquity. And that includes after you're a Christian, because, you know, guys especially, but it seems like more women lately, pornography is more and more of a temptation, and it's a very defiling thing. But we're not defeated people. Remember, I read from uh, 1 Corinthians 6, such were some of you, but you've been cleansed, right? And I just love the way she talked about how your innocence can be restored in the Lord. And it's not exactly the topic tonight, but I really still encourage everybody I can to watch Joyce Meyer testimony about her own life called One Life, about how she was sexually abused by her father for years while she was in high school. And yet, you know, what the devil meant for evil, God turned around for good because she was able to get the supernatural strength to forgive him, forgive him, but then lead him to the Lord and baptize him and, and uh, be able to even kiss him on the cheek, she said, and not feel reviled by that where in the past there was such a, a negative picture painted from all the abuse. So that's supernatural, but God doesn't show favorites, right? So if he did it for her, he can do it for us and does do it for us. And you might know people who just feel like there's no way God could ever forgive me from the thing, for the things that I did. That's a lie. Who's telling her that? The devil, right? And we're here to say, uh, uh, no, sorry, don't, don't ever be, believe that that, that that things can't change. That person's hopeless. Well, if you say that person's hopeless, you just eliminated God from the formula. And you can't ever eliminate God from, from the formula. Even Lazarus, four days dead, and, and nothing was hopeless there, right? So you know, there's something about coming back out of that tomb 
that allows you to then help other people because you have an authority. When he sets you free in an area, you then have authority to help people in that area. And there's going to be a lot of people. I mean, I'm sure it's way worse now with this app Tinder. You know, people could just find somebody, don't even need to know their name, and just go through an act that they think is just a physical thing. It's not. It's a very defiling spiritual thing. And, and the good news is the church can help get them free and restore their innocence and have that fresh start. So I just want to say. Yeah, so um, I know it's very difficult, especially if there's been betrayal in your relationship and your marriage. And like, like Joyce Myers, you know, her, it took her a while before she went to her dad. You know, most of us would want to hire someone to take him out. But she, that was God that, that, that's only the Lord that she was able to even kiss him on the cheek. Because even when he said, I was like, you know, but, but that was the spirit of the Lord. And I heard Kay, Kay Arthur, and I thought this was good. She said, when Jesus died on the cross, he became that murderer. He became that gay person. He became the lesbian. He became that one that was involved in bestiality. And I never looked at it like that when she said that. And, and so I said, oh, Lord. I said, you became, because he took sin upon him. And I said, Lord, I said, I thank you for your mercy in my life. So mercy, in James it says, mercy triumphs over judgment. So it's like, Lord, help me to have your heart. doesn't mean we roll over and play dead either. But help me have that heart of forgiveness. Like, like it took Joyce Myers a, a while before she was able to do what she did with her dad. Because, I mean, what he did to her, that he just needed to, you know be put to death or something, you know, but because it was awful. No, you're not <laughs> I know, I know, but it was terrible what, what happened. So, you know, and so that was supernatural for her. So I'm going to just pray because God wants, I just feel like God wants to heal hearts because there's betrayal, there's hurt, there's shame, there's, the, you know, like your regrets. And, um, and so the Lord Jesus wants to heal tonight. And, and so you say, oh, well, we're not going to pray through individual soul ties. No, because I feel like we need to do that a little more one-on-one, -on -one, or you can pray at home, then you know, appointments can be made. But, um, but w let's stand up and let's just pray. Because just remember about his amazing love that he has for us. And, and he doesn't want us walking, like my husband said, there's no condemnation. He doesn't want us walking around in guilt, but he wants us to walk a victorious life and have honor and respect for ourselves and love ourselves and not allow ourselves to be mistreated in any way, shape, or form or mistreat other people, right? So, Lord, we just thank you for your, your mercy. Lord, we are just so grateful for the goodness of the Lord. Lord, your word says, oh, come, let's magnify the Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you have bottled up every tear that has been um, cried out and every hair you've numbered every hair on our heads because you know the pain and the hurt of betrayal and disappointment or being used and abused and and uh, or, or thinking that if you gave yourself away that that man would love you and honor you and he leaves you and there's just so many different scenarios here but Lord in that I ask you to meet each and every one of us right where we're at, that you come and you heal our broken heart. You heal the bitterness. You heal, heal the hardness of our heart for the abuse that was taking place. Only you can do that, Lord. And Holy Spirit, we just thank you that your hand is upon each and every one's life, even those that are in, there's someone watching that, that you're involved in fornication right now. The Lord will provide that way of escape. And so, Lord, I just pray that, that you'll give people the strength and the wisdom to shut the door, that they make that choice to shut the door and make the right choices. Lord, you've called us to be a pure, holy vessel before you. And so, Lord, I ask for the holy fear of the Lord to be released upon your people, upon all of us. But, Lord, I thank you for your tender, loving mercy and compassion to reach out to meet each and every person where they're at. And, Lord, I just loose the blessings of the Lord. I, I bind up all uh, shame and regret and disappointment and, and self-hatred and um, this, uh, you know, all uh, spiritual abuse, Father, we just take authority over that and we lose deliverance, all sexual shame, we bind that up, all lust and perversion, we bind that up in Jesus' name and we lose deliverance. And Lord, I just thank you for a complete turnaround in Jesus' name.